Good evening, everyone, and welcome to you all to this very special event uh, to celebrate the life and work of the amazing Otto Eicher, which we are co-hosting tonight with our friends from FSB. Because we're going to go on a journey, as Carolyn said earlier, a journey tonight to try and explore a little bit about this wonderful man, what he left for us in terms of his legacy and his learnings, his philosophy, and his achievements. But this is where we really start the, uh, how shall I say, the bigger story, which is in 1953, the founding of the Hochschule für Gestaltung, the HFG, in Ulm. I'm imagining that some of you, or most of you, know something of Ulm. Some of you may know a great deal about it. I think it's one of the really extraordinarily neglected areas of study of the 20th century, both in design education and in design practice. Now, um, he'd won this project, and he put together this significant team of people to work on it, including Ian McLaren, who I mentioned earlier, who's with us. And he, uh, he approached this in a very, very different way to, the, to, to anything that had been done previously. Um, it was, it was in, in Ottel's mind, it, was got, it had to be the antithesis of the 1936 Berlin Olympics, which the Nazis had used as a pro propaganda machine, a propaganda tool. And it, it, it was everything that that wasn't. There was no red, there was no black, there was no gold. Instead, it was this, heiter. It was clear, bright, cheerful. He was always very fond of the, the ritual of breaking bread and cooking and preparing food and growing food. And he's quoted by uh, his, his sons as saying he brought cooking for pleasure to our family. Now, that's something that we've, you know, we, we kind of embrace now, we kind of accept it as, as normal, but at that time, it was, a, it was a very different kind of attitude towards the process of cooking. Let's move on to his next, next big project, which is Bulthaub, our hosts for this evening, or one of our hosts. Um, Martin Bulthaub up here, he started the company in 1949 making cabinets, and uh, has gone on, uh, the company has gone on <coughs> to develop itself as uh, one of the leading kitchen manufacturing companies in the world. But their, their association with Eich, with Eicher, uh, uh, came, first of all, through this man, Gerd Bulthaub, uh, who took over from his father, Martin, and brought, Gerd, uh, brought, uh, uh, brought Ottel in to really kind of change the philosophy of the company. And this is, this is an admission that Gerd himself made. He asked me if I could cook. And when I said I couldn't, he said I needed to learn before I set about designing kitchens. So they, they set off on this gastro tour, Touring the world's Michelin restaurants, or the equivalents, looking for what fine food meant, what, what were the kitchens like. When they went to these restaurants, they'd, they'd talk to the owners and say, come and have a look at your kitchen. And they'd go in there and they'd see what professional, kitchen, what professional chefs were doing. And then they'd gather all this information, and Otto wrote a book about it. Die Küche zum Kuchen, the kitchen for cooking. He needed to formulate all of this knowledge into a manifesto which he was then able to publish, and Bulthaupt were then able to use as the philosophy that not only informed their subsequent developments, but also showed the history of the kitchen, way back from the Frankfurt kitchen, uh, right through its evolution, the introduction of ergonomics, about where things should be in space, this rather fuzzy drawing, I'm afraid, of Ottel's own kitchen. There's a real photograph of it, and there's uh, Inga it, sitting in the kitchen. Very different principles of, of how to use a kitchen and how to cook. And he was very, very determined. This, was, this man, Hans Neudecker, was the leader of the Bulthaup team. It really was, you know, it was, a, it was a big change that they had to embrace. And he was full of these maxims. If you can get a copy of the book, which you can still buy on the internet, it's in German, but there are some lovely proclamations by Eicher. The kitchen is as good as its knives. Please, no colour in the kitchen. We don't want any of that. No, the colour comes from... The, the vegetables, the food, the food that you put in there, that's where the kitchen has its colour, not in the kitchen itself. That's, that's, that's Ottel's principle. And he also produced these beautiful black and white uh, images for advertising purposes, these posters which you probably saw when you were coming in. And this lovely one as well, which gives a hint about this idea. Die Küche als Lebensraum, the kitchen as a living room. This notion of the kitchen moving out of this service area into the space in which people live in their homes. Not just the dining room, but the living room as well. And it had informed Bulthaupt's subsequent 
design, not, not that he was a kitchen designer, he wasn't designing kitchens for them, but the philosophy was there guiding them through the evolution. System B came soon afterwards. The workbench, that was a revolution. That takes me back to my time when I first got to know the company, uh, which was mentioned earlier by Carolyn. This, this was a, you can see how this would come from a commercial kitchen. System 25 followed, System 20 came after that, and now the, the current incarnations, the B1, the B2, which is similar to that workbench idea, the B3, I'm not going to dwell on this, we can talk about this later if you want, but uh, this, this notion of the kitchen pushing its way into the living area and becoming a central point for activities in the home, and these separate items as well, these solitaire items that Bultamp now do, which embrace all areas of the living room. This brings us on to our other uh, co-sponsor for the evening, FSB. Now, FSB make beautiful door handles and ironmongery. Uh, they do it from this factory in North Rhine-Westphalia. Uh, this was a relationship that came through this man here, Jürgen Werner Braun. Rather confusing, the Braun thing. Nothing to do with the other Braun at all. Um, he met uh, Klaus Jürgen Mack, who the man I was mentioning very sadly left us last week. And Ottel saw this as the very essence, the very... The, 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 the very basic principle of what a handle was, this simple bent bar, and hence the evolution of this incredibly direct, simple, powerful symbol of, of the bent bar and FSB's straight logo. He built on this principle of what he called the four laws of grasping, griefen und griffer, how your hand approaches a handle, how it, what happens to the actual physical process as you touch the handle. And it was, it was laid out in this very clear, the thumb guide, the forefinger furrow, the palm of the hand support, the gripping substance, all of these things very formulated. The idea getting right inside what it was to make a handle, to look at a handle, to use a handle. And he made them write a book about it because he loved to do this. We've already seen. Write a book. It's a manifesto. It's an instrument of discipline. It makes you think about what you do, who you are. And this notion of the hand has become absolutely central. And one of the wonderful things that FSB now do is constant publishing. Now, um, we're going to have to look at the film uh, shortly, but I just wanted to run through his association with Norman Foster because this is a really interesting part of his career. Um, Norma will tell you in his own words in a minute um, how they came together and, and what he thought about Otto and, and, and how they formed this remarkable bond. He is, for me, an extraordinary mentor. We see Ottel, I do at least, as the father of corporate identity. This approach to how you define a company's identity, you question what it is, what it is that they really do, it comes from him. You know, this isn't something that's, that's been evolved in, in, in the last 10 years by, by branding agencies, it's from Ottel. And I'll, I'll leave the, the last word to uh, Ottel himself. In design, man becomes what he is. It defines you, and you define it. You define your life through that practice, and he certainly did. And that is Otto Eicher signing off. Thank you.